Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm Dan Jackson and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a fire alarm weekly test. We are here at the National Trust property Itamo in Sevenoaks, Kent and the premises team have been kind enough to let us video this to show you how to carry out a weekly test on their fire alarm system. The team here take fire safety incredibly seriously. They have National Trust members who enter their properties and they've got staff in there as well. So the fire alarm system is there for life safety but also for property protection. Let's go inside and say hello. Hopefully someone's in. British Standards 5839 Part 1 states that a manual call point should be tested every week during normal working hours. You should confirm that when tested the fire alarm system goes into fire, sound is activate and if your system is monitored, the monitoring sensor receive a fire signal. The weekly test should be carried out approximately at the same day and time each week so that everybody gets used to the fire alarm sounding and any occupants should report any poor levels of sounders or anything that they sort of see that isn't normal during that time. Um, we always recommend that you test your fire alarm on a Tuesday, which in the industry is known as Test It Tuesday, but it's completely up to you and it's down to you and what suits your property. A different call point should be tested every week so that you're rotating the call point over a prolonged period of time. The standards state you only need to test one call point per week. However, if you've, if you've got 150 call points in your system, you might want to increase the number that you test. And some organizations do encourage you to do that. So do we, it makes sense. It doesn't take long to do a weekly test. So. When you carry out your weekly test, you need to know when your manual call points are and where your sounders should sound. When the system was installed, there should be documentation and as fitted drawings of where all the equipment is and device lists and so forth. And it should be in an O&M manual, hard copy, electronic or whatever. If you haven't got that information, ask your maintenance provider. I mean, they may charge to produce that information, but it's very important that you have um, documentation of where all your stuff is. So you've got a list of call points that you need to test because you need to reference which one you've tested. If your fire alarm system is monitored, before you do your weekly test, you have to call up the monitoring center and put it on test. Now, different monitoring centers have different procedures on how you do that. This particular one is an automated system. We dial up using a landline. We put our code in so it knows what site we are and it goes through a few functions to find out um, what you want to do. So we put it on test and we put it on for you know, however long we're doing the service for, so eight hours or whatever. Now what I do recommend is that you don't get into the habit of just putting on the maximum time it allows you to, because the truth is, a fire could start any time. So if we're testing for one hour, put it on for one hour. If we're testing for five hours, put it on for five hours. And as soon as you're finished, take it off test. It's really important. And I know so many companies, engineers, they just put it on for a whole day. A fire can start at any time of the day. Just always remember that. This system has a Nimbus fire alarm management system. It provides supplementary notification for fire, fault and other functions. It's a great bit of kit. Um, I'll put a link below to their website for you to check it out. Now, before you do your weekly test, we have to put our key in the weekly test switch and turn it to on, just like that. Once you've completed your weekly test, you take it out and put it back to normal mode. You as the user don't need to use this key switch, that's for engineers. But it's important that you put it on your weekly test if you've got a Nimbus system. Now not all fire alarm systems have Nimbus systems, so just ignore this, um, you won't need to do that, it's non-applicable. 
you need to know how to use your fire alarm control panel. We always recommend that your maintenance company gives you a handover and demonstration on how to use it. All panels work differently. This is a Kentec Electronics Synchro Panel. Very good panel. All you basically need to know is the, the real basics of the user code and how to navigate the buttons. You can download information online about how to use the panel as the user and that's not the engineering manual you're, you're not interested in that you just need to know how to silence reset do some real basic functions what I will say about this panel is that the user code uh, if it hasn't been changed is 2222 enter however you have to press a key beforehand to activate the the buttons so we always say press 2 five times and then enter for example We're now in our user menu, and that's when we can press silence and reset. On this particular panel, you have to press that user code before you can do anything. So when you're doing your weekly test, you have to make sure you press your user code and then you press silence and reset. The way you test a manual call point varies from brand to brand, so you need to make sure you know how you do it. Some people think that the same key goes in the bottom or the top or the side or whatever, but the truth is every type is different. Um, you know, some are similar, but if you're not sure, ask your maintenance provider. Um, you just don't want to damage your call points because they'll have to be replaced and it causes a lot of issues and it, you know, it's costly. This is our manual call point. It is an Apollo XP95 older style call point. You have to make sure you've got the right test key for the right call point. There's so many different types of test keys out there and it's vital you have the right one otherwise you end up damaging your manual call point and it can be costly to fix. So even the same manufacturers use multiple different types of test keys. So just check with your service provider which key you need. My colleague here is about to test the call point. He's put in the test key in the bottom of the call point. The glass is going to drop. You can hear the fire panel going off. The LED light should go off. There you go. We're going to put our access code in to our panel. We're going to press Silence alarm or acknowledge alarm on this panel. You can hear the sound as it gone off. We're going to press reset. It's all gone back to normal. To recap, you activate your manual call point. The LED light on the manual call point should light. If it has one, some don't. Go to the panel. You make sure that the text marries up with the call point that you're testing. You press silence and you press reset. But you, if for example, the manual call point hasn't been put back together, i.e. you know, it's jammed or you haven't put the mechanism back correctly. If you press reset, it will just go straight back into fire. So you have to make sure you do that first. So you press silence, you press reset, everything should go back to normal. When we activated the call point, we went to the panel and we made sure that the text on the panel or the zonal LED lit that is relative to the call point that you're testing. So we're in a service room, on the panel it said service room and it matched up our, our documentation, matched up with what we were testing. If there's any differences for example that you can find, you need to point it out to your maintenance provider. They may have to redo the programming, change some text or if you've got a more simple system just look into that the zoning is correct so it's important that your documentation matches up with what you think you are actually doing find any defects let your maintenance company know once you've completed your fire alarm weekly test note down what manual call points you have tested in a logbook along with any defects if there are any defects make sure you contact your maintenance provider because we have a nimber system we then turn the key the weekly test key to off we have monitoring as well, so we call on a monitoring centre to take the system off test and we find out and make sure that they've got the signal. And that concludes the test.
this is a guide to fire alarm weekly testing. Not all systems are the same, so the processes might be a little bit different depending on the system. Ultimately, speak to your maintenance company as they should provide a, a practical demonstration and handover of how to do your weekly test. But hopefully, this guide has been pretty helpful. If you would like some more information on user responsibilities for a fire alarm system, I highly recommend you visit the fia.uk.com website. The Fire Industry Association, a great organisation, there's lots of info on there and I'll put a link below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm going to sign out of the property now and say see you later to the premises team. Goodbye for now.